Welcome to the five steps of problem solving. Solving life's problems. When you take an addictive behavior out of your life, you will still have your share of difficulties. But without the extra problems and complications, the addictive behavior adds. One life skill we can all use is problem solving. Break down paralyzing problems into smaller manageable steps. Managing problems becomes easier once you accept that. There will be people who will never accept that you have changed. There are and always will be some situations that are beyond your control. You may have acted out because problems are overwhelmed. You and you saw no solution except escape from your addictive behavior. A big part of managing thoughts, feelings, and behaviors is finding a way through life's problems rather than around them. Having a more positive outlook and accepting things for what they are can save you a lot of trouble and worry. By stubbornly refusing to let your emotions take over, problem solving gets easier. Remember the three Ps, practice, patience, and persistence. Consider using the model for problem solving. Number one, define the problem. You can't solve a problem that you haven't defined. It's a common human trait to assume we know what problems is, then jump to conclusions and solutions. Some problems are so large they can't be solved until you break them down. You can't solve world hunger, but you can feed a homeless family. Defining a problem involves two steps. Understanding its specific nature and identify workable solutions. If your problem is finding a new place to live because you've been evicted, the solution is straightforward. If your problem is a teenager, your teenage daughter who keeps running away, it may take time to define the root problem and even longer to solve it. Number two, brainstorm. Come up with them as many solutions to the problem as you can. You can do this alone with a friend or therapist or in a smart recovery meeting. The secret is to let ideas flow without judging or discussing them. Be wild, push the envelope, be open to all ideas. Do this until you run out of ideas. The main rule is don't analyze or judge the idea. Don't let anyone say that won't work or I tried it once during a brainstorming activity. Ideas, even bizarre ones, may stimulate your thinking and lead you to ideas that can work. Let them build on each other. You'll assess them in the next step. Evaluate. Use a scale from zero to 10 to rate each idea. How realistic is it? How likely is it going to work? Does the solution have rewards? What are the consequences? Can I afford it? If an idea scores zero, threw it out, but be careful not to judge it too quickly. An idea that seems unworkable or too out there at first may look more reasonable the longer you think about it. If you have an assumption about any of the ideas, you may need to gather more information before you rate it to determine if your assumption are true or false. Number four, select. You evaluated and rated your ideas. Now select one and try it. What's most important 
is that you have thought through your choices. Something you may not have a lot of experience doing. Number five, create a written plan. You'll most likely get better results if you write down your plan instead of just carrying it around with you in your head. Write down the solution you choose and how will you implement it. Write the start date and the location and everything you'll need to make the solution happen and successful. You can use the change plan worksheet on page 18 in the Smart Recovery Handbook for this to work. Put your plan into action. Record your results every day if appropriate. Is your plan working? Did you modify it? Compare your results with your expectations. It's likely that your results are different from what you want or expected. Can you adjust your plan? Should you try a different solution? Ask others for their ideas or discuss it in the Smart Recovery Meeting. Get quick feedback on your plan will help you stay focused on solving your original problem. Like most things in recovery, this takes practice. Like all skill building, it helps to find people who will give you the honest feedback, will support you. You'll make mistakes, you'll get discouraged, but don't give up. And don't label yourself as a failure. With time and effort, healthy problem solving will become second nature to you. Look forward to the next video, Strategies for Relapse Prevention. See you then. Bye-bye for now.